digestion of food takes at least two to six hours depending on the size of the meal that you've had. If you've had a very light meal, perhaps let's say a banana or something light, you know, just for energy before a swim, I think that's acceptable. But if you've had a full three course, six course meal, then use common sense and I think maybe delay the swim or you know any strenuous exercise, even going to the gym, bench pressing, you know, anything that's going to increase your intra-abdominal pressure to uh, you know maybe the next day or when your stomach is relatively empty. However, I think that if you're going for a gentle walk around the block or around the garden, I think that actually that's a really good idea. You know, uh, walking around helps some of the food uh, get you know to pass further down the ways. You know, increases gastric motility. I think it's a great idea to help the food digest. You know, in the simplest way. I would usually reserve eating fruit or any food in general, to be honest, to the earlier part of the day. A lot of gastrointestinal symptoms that patients face surprisingly occur in the, you know, towards the end of the day or at night. And that's largely because they have a large meal um, you know, at the end of the day after work when they come home. Now, if you can think about it, the next thing that you're going to do is fall asleep and go to bed. Now, that's not the best thing if you have symptoms like acid reflux, if you have uh, what we call dyspepsia or bloating, or you have a lot of burping symptoms, you know, um, acid rash, that means you wake up in the mornings with a horrible taste in your mouth, that suggests that you have acid reflux as well. So what you want to do really is reserve the large meals that you have to maybe breakfast and lunch and have a very light meal for dinner, preferably before seven o'clock, leaving about three hours to four hours before you go to sleep. I think that's the, you know, the wisest advice that I can give. Now, when it comes to fruits, uh, bear in mind that um, you know, some fruits like pineapples, papaya, may aid in digestion. Now, um, I think these fruits um, you know, in small or decent quantities are, are great you know, after a meal um, to help with digestion. Now, on the other hand, having 10 durians at 10 p.m. at night may not be the wisest idea for you in getting good night's rest or helping with your digestive symptoms either. A lot of patients ask me about apple cider vinegar and other household remedies. I say to them, why not try it and see whether it works for you. If it does, great. If it doesn't, then don't wait too long to come and see a doctor and specialist like us to get a proper assessment of your condition because there might be something more serious hiding below. Now, once you've had that proper assessment, you can decide whether you need definitive treatment for the symptoms that you're having, or you can get away with just lifestyle modification. A lot of patients ask me about alcohol and its effect on the body and the liver. Now, alcohol not only um, adds calories, but has a toxic effect on the liver in large quantities. Now, there are two types of alcohol intake. One is chronic alcohol intake. That means you're having more than 20 or 30 units a week, depending on whether you're a lady or a gentleman. Um, but um, these calories, of course, add up, okay, eventually. Now, um, if you're taking an excessive amount of alcohol per day on a chronic basis, it eventually can lead to liver cirrhosis. So you need to be careful. If you think about it, we've always been told, child, finish your food. Don't waste anything on the plate. The trouble is, if you have to finish everything that's on your plate every night and you are starting to be obese even as a child, then 
20, 30 years down the road, okay, you may be starting to develop liver cirrhosis. Whereas our parents' generation who grew up, grew up when food was maybe slightly more scarce or in less available, you know, they only started to become obese or fat when they were in their 40s and 50s. So they had a further 20 or 30 years then to develop liver cirrhosis. They only did develop liver cirrhosis maybe in their 80s. Now, there's a worrying trend, like I said, amongst younger adults now that we're seeing the development of liver cirrhosis occurring in patients in their 40s and 50s. And what we're worried about then is the development of the increasing trend of the development of liver cancer in these patients.